Welcome back to Cookie's Fish Room. My name is Norm, for those who don't know me, and for those who are tuning again in again this week, welcome back and thank you once again for joining us. Today, I will be talking to you guys about beta care, what you need to know, and what things you need to steer away from. So let's grab a cuppa, let's get cracking, and let's talk about one of the most, well, one of the most prettiest fish, in my opinion, there is in the hobby, beaters, aka Siamese, biting fish as they're known here in Australia. So um, these fish are absolutely stunning and they are found in all parts of the world, a lot of aquariums. Um, every, I guess, every fish group on Facebook that I've been in, there's always one or two people at least, at the very least, that have these fish. So I have literally never seen a prettier fish in my life than these guys. I have seen rainbow ones, they're, the wild ones, and there is the alien uh, strain, uh, have to be my favourites. They are absolutely stunning. The colour yellow is absolutely gorgeous on these creatures. And um, if you have the chance to buy one and to give one a home, do it. You won't regret it. These guys are fantastic pets, and they have the personality of a human just about. They're great. Um, some of them can be like um, the not so great humans as well, but that just adds to their characters. So let's have a chat about these guys. So let's talk about the elephant in the room that everyone always talks about when it comes to these fish is tank size. Let's talk about that first. Um, personally, I don't recommend anything larger or um, smaller at the same time than a five gallon for these guys. Reason being, I don't like anything smaller to start with because they, they, the smaller the tank, the harder it is to maintain a cycle inside that tank. So maintaining a cycle is really, really important when it comes to these fish. The beneficial bacteria, they're very sensitive to nitrates, ammonia, nitrites. So be very careful when you um, getting these into a tank for the first time. Make sure that the tank is cycled. The pH has to be low. So um, Indian almond leaves are a great addition to their tanks. It helps them with, um, you know, really good bacteria in there, um, fights disease for them. And it also provides them that, um, you know, the tannins that they release will also give them that natural feel, that, that natural environment that they found in. Um, some people like to think that they're found in clear, gorgeous planted tank, uh, planted water, but that's not. That's definitely not the case. Um, these guys are found in very shallow water. Um, that's not restricted to a cup size, despite what you read and what people say and what literature says on Google, which I absolutely hate how inaccurate it is. Um, there's nothing worse than when you're walking in the shopping centre um, or the mall and you see uh, beaters being sold in cups that really grinds my gears. So um, yeah, just remember these guys do need some room and um, a planted tank is always, you know, aesthetically pleasing to, for us and for them to give them that natural feel. So five gallons, because it can maintain that cycle, 2.5 gallons, I have found almost impossible to maintain a cycle unless I am doing daily water changes and that fish does not have enough room to move in a 2.5 um, gallon tank, AKA around 20 liters, 21 liters. So please don't forget that. Now that brings me to the next topic. What do you put inside this tank? Substrate wise, they're fine with most types of substrates as long as it's not very sharp because of their uh, fins and their tails. I like to use sand personally. Play sand is absolutely fine. I went down to my hardware shop picked up a huge, uh, I think it was an eight kilogram bag, and that was more than enough to use for about $5, and um, gave that a wash, put it in there with some nice natural plants, and it absolutely loves his home now. Um, so that brings me to plants also. It is, I think it is imperative to have natural plants in the tank. Reason being, A, because if you're using a five gallon, it actually helps restrict the nitrates, ammonia, etc. It maintains, it helps you maintain that cycle. You do not want to be doing water changes daily. Um, that's and that's the other thing too. Um, you need to make sure that the fish feels at home. It feels natural to them. 
they, they do need floating plants. If you have a look at where they're found in the wild, they're always hiding under leaves, under other plants, uh, branches and leaves. I recommend frog beard, water, lettuce. Um, it gives them that, that natural feel, to, it gives that, that area a natural feel to them. They all go underneath it when you do have it. Um, a cave is very useful in a tank. Make sure whatever you're using does not have sharp edges. That includes driftwood, um, ceramic decorations, um, rocks, and more importantly, plastic plants. And that's another reason why I prefer to use real plants. If you go and go down the route of using um, fake plants, please use silk plants. They're not, they're not sharp, but they do, they do get algae growing on them from time to time. And when that happens, you, you tend to want to rub it off and give it a wash, pull it out of the tank, but you are washing off the beneficial bacteria that's in the tank. So keep that in mind. You do not want to be washing that off. So that's why, again, use live plants. And that's why I do recommend live plants. So um, 10 gallons tends to be a, a little bit too big for these guys. They don't have the tendency to swim back and forth all day. They like to be in one place at a time for, a little, for an amount of time. So I do recommend five gallons for that reason also. Nothing taller than a foot slash uh, 12 inches, you are you are going to make, they're not really, um, you know, vertical swimmers. So unless they're coming up to breathe or to get uh, food, they don't really tend, you don't want them to be swimming up and down all day. So keep that in mind, look after their fins and their tails. It's very important. Um, anything too small will increase stress and that will also, the tank I'm talking about here, around 2.5 gallons. 2.5 gallons will cause stress and will give them um, disease eventually. So try to stick to a five gallon tank. They're a great size for them and your fish will thank you for it. Now food, these guys cannot eat plant-based foods. So steer away from anything plant-based. They are carnivores slash insect eaters. So things like Daphnia, black worms, um, let me just have a quick look at my list because I do have it here, beef heart, uh, blood worms. But with the blood worms, give it to them as a treat. Do not give it to them more than twice a week in large amounts because it will, it will cause them to have fat around their organs. It will cause them to have issues such as dropsy. It will cause you to lose your fish much earlier than their life expectancy. Remember that. So blood worms are a treat. Um, give them everything else. I, I give them a range of different live foods, uh, live uh, shrimp, uh, what do you call it? I buy feeder shrimp and mine absolutely destroy shrimp in the tank. They absolutely love it. Um, mine, I throw in my bladder snails. I love to eat my bladder snails from other tanks. And beef heart, they absolutely adore. So don't forget that. Um, you do, you do on occasion want to give them daphnia. It gives them a bit of a, clean, a cleaning uh, process of their um, intestines, it cleans them out a bit, has a laxative effect, um, similar to what peas do on other fish. Um, what you usually do when you have dropsy, you would give peas to, uh, after you fast that is, give peas to those fish, feed them shelled peas, and it will make them basically have the runs. Now, you don't want to do that with these dudes because they they can't have plant-based foods. It will make them in, incredibly sick. And again, you will lose your little mate. Live um, Daphnia will have that similar sort of effect, that laxative effect. And more importantly, you can also use Epsom salt baths. I tend not to use more than five minutes for these guys. It does stress them out. So remember to use water from their um, existing tank because the parameters match that way and you're just adding the um, Epsom salt in it. It has to be a bath, you can't add it to their tank. All right, so I do have my iPad in front of me because there's way too much to remember over here when it comes to these guys. So you do, I, I think I did mention lower pH and um, the other, that's the other thing, sororities. That's a word that gets me in a tongue twist. And um, I don't personally recommend it. So these guys out in the wild don't live in a bunch of females, they don't live in a bunch of males, they don't live, you know, that all they do is mate and go their own way. It's, it's a natural thing for them to fight with each other. So it also means that if you do say, look, I have a sorority of six uh, females together, um, just because 
It may have, I won't say worked for you, but because they haven't killed each other yet, it does not mean A, it won't happen eventually, and B, they're not feeling the stress. So one thing I can't stand is when people say to me, oh, you know, it works, it, it, so they haven't fought with each other, it works for me, so I'm recommending it to other people. You may have got lucky. What happens in nature is the best guide to go with. So they're not housed with a bunch of guppies, angelfish, and you know, other cichlids. They're found uniquely on their own. If you want to talk tank mates, you can have the odd uh, male or female in with um, smaller fish. I prefer like neons or rasboras. Um, fish with less flashier colors because they, or even, um, you know, cardinal tetras. Um, well, not sometimes cardinal tetras, they don't tend to fight because of their size and they don't feel threatened by those. So the, the smaller and the less flashier fish will be the much safer option if you do want to have tank mates with these guys. But I do try to recommend not having any tank mates at all. And especially things like shrimp, uh, cherry shrimp, amano shrimp, ghost shrimp, um, you know, mystery snails, they'll become its lunch. It's their natural predator out in the wild. They will eat insects, they will eat, uh, which uh, shrimp are, they will eat snails. So bear that in mind, don't go wasting your money giving it an expensive meal with, you know, crystalline uh, shrimp. I have made that mistake in the past when I was a noob to this all. Don't forget that they, they will eat it. So, um, you know, they don't get lonely. They're found in the wild on their own. They're happy that way. So keep it that way if you can, but if you get desperate for tank mates, there are a small amount of options that you can put with these guys if you want to avoid stress, if you want to avoid disease, and if you want to avoid a huge brawl inside your tank. So now, uh, I want to talk about medication for these guys or when they get sick. So I did mention, I did touch on Epsom salt bars, uh, very important when they get bloated. You, I do recommend fasting these guys first for 48 hours, uh, before going down the path of things like Epsom salt baths because, you know, sometimes they do eat a little bit too much just like any other fish that will beg for food the minute they see you or come to the surface. T try not to fall into that trap. Don't feel sorry for them. They're fine with a small amount of food. Smaller amount, the better. They won't starve. They will thank you for that. Less pressure on their swim bladders, on their other organs and less chances of dropsy. So the other thing that leads to is medications that end with the word fix. Stay away from medications that end with the word fix. Pimafix, Betafix, Malfix. Uh, I'm just trying to, they contain the oils, that, the tea tree oils that are, that are um, in this mixture of medications, damages, does a huge amount of damage to these guys. So they have a la labyrinth organ, I can say that. And um, yeah, these guys, you don't want to be mixing that sort of tea tree oil with fish with that organ, including gourami. So just keep, bear that in mind, stay well away from those. They won't help this fish at all, okay? So, um, you can use things like Marison 2 instead, or, you know, a sulfur-based medi medication. And uh, another thing people keep asking me, salt is safe for them. Used at the right and correct dosage, small amounts at a time, aquarium salt is fine for these fish. So, um, the last thing that I want to touch on is their uh, colours. They are the most gorgeous fish you've ever seen. They've got a range of colors, every color of the rainbow, just about from purples to bright greens to yellow, my favorite. Um, you do have a variety that do marble. And what do I mean by marble is they will change their colors from time to time. So a lot of people get this marbling mixed up with disease such as um, columnaris or epistylus because they will change or get white patches on them. So, don't panic if you see yours change color. It may not be white. It might go black um, splodges on it. It may go completely different. It may be white when you buy this fish. By the end of the month, it may be blue. So don't forget these fish are well known for marbling. They don't, um, 
they're pretty hardy. They don't, they really, I've, I've, mine have really been sick touch wood. Oh, I don't want to jinx myself now. But you don't um, always think the worst first. Always remember to test your water. That's the, the giveaway that they're under some sort of stress is if your parameters are off or if um, they don't act right. So if they're not eating, they're not swimming correctly, their swimming motion is off, or you don't see them for a few days, they so just don't wanna come out, they, they're always hiding. Always keep those in mind. So I'll just like to say quickly before I forget, thank you to everybody who's been subscribing. It's been awesome. Thanks for um, giving us the thumbs up for all our videos. I really appreciate it more than anything. This video has been in demand for a while. Um, a lot of, there are a lot of beta keepers out there. So hopefully this will give you guys all the info you need to care for your little mate. Or if you um, have been, you know, wondering if you should buy one, this will help you have the correct info you need to get out there and buy one for yourself. Now, thank you again for joining us. Take care of yourselves. Give this video a thumbs up if you think it's worthy of one. And don't forget to tune in for our next video. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.